says that God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which Jesus Christ will judge the world in righteousness. Are you ready to stand before God? If he died today, are you prepared to give an answer for your life? The scripture says he will open the books of your life and will judge you according to what is found therein. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. I mean, Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to return. He's going to judge the living and the dead. Are you prepared? Are you ready? We all throughout the teachings of Jesus Christ and the writings of the apostles, they make it clear that the return of Jesus Christ will come as a thief in the night for so many people. What does that mean exactly? It means that so many people are not going to be ready for the return of Jesus. Their lives are not ready. The things they're saying, the things they're thinking, the things they're doing do not line up with the commands of Jesus Christ and the teachings of Scripture. Therefore, when he returns, it won't be a joyful day or a happy day or a good day for them. It'll be a terrible day. Because when Christ returns, he's not going to come back and allow the wicked to do whatever they want to do to him again. When Jesus returns, he's going to punish the wicked. It says in Jude 14, when he returns with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds. Why are you shaking your head, man? Why are you shaking your head? So are you loving somebody by not telling them the truth? Are you loving someone by letting them sin and not calling to repentance? You shake your head while I preach the word of God, which is love. So when he returns with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This is what the state of Jesus' return will be when he parts the sky. When Jesus returns, it won't be a grace day or a forgiveness day. It'll be a judgment day. God is going to deal with people in truth. Jesus is the truth. He will deal with you in truth. According to how you've lived your life. According to the words that have come out of your mouth. According to the things you've thought about. Jesus Christ is calling you to repentance. He commands all men everywhere to repent. Well, mankind, man, calls all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. The scripture says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ, he offers you eternal life but you must receive it on his term with his repentance of sin and faith childlike faith in jesus christ turning from all your sins forsaking your sins whatever they may be drunkenness sexual immorality drug use lust all these things are sins in god's eyes covetousness god is calling you to repentance of all your sins and there's no good reason to continue to be a sinner Sin puts you in great danger. Sin is going to cost you your soul in the end. But God is offering you a place of pardon, a place of forgiveness and mercy today through Jesus Christ who died for you on the cross and then rose again on the third day, defeating death. And this same Jesus who was born in a manger, born in a humble place as a child of a virgin, the same Jesus Christ who allowed wicked men to cause him to suffer. The same Jesus Christ will cause the wicked to suffer when he returns. And no shaking of heads, no mocking, no scoffing will be done on that day. 
you know, Jesus Christ talks about these things, the scripture talks about these things, that scoffers and mockers come in the last days walking according to their own lust. So when you mock and scoff the scripture, when you mock and scoff the teaching of the Bible, when you mock and scoff the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's a sure sign you're in trouble. For the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those of us who are being saved is the power of God unto salvation. So why did why did God make it this way? Why did he make it such a way that the only way someone can be saved from their sins, delivered from hell, cleansed from their condemnation and guilt, is through this man dying on a Roman cross almost 2,000 years ago. Why did, why did God make it that way? It seems like foolishness to the, the natural mind. That's precisely why he made it this way, because it requires humility on your part to come to it. It requires humility on your part to receive this man who died for you on the cross. It takes humility on your part to stop the things that don't matter, all the things that are nonsense and don't matter in light of eternity. It takes humility on your part to, to say, yes, I will follow this man named Jesus, this Jewish man who almost 2,000 years ago now died on a Roman cross. So it takes humility. God has set it up in such a way because he loves humility. He despises pride. It's one of the things that he hates in Proverbs 6. Even a prideful look, a haughty look, Scripture says God hates. But God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. And that's just the, the, the main thing for most people. They won't humble themselves. They won't put aside their pride. That's why the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them, a stumbling block to them. Because it doesn't make any sense to the natural mind that a man who was crucified can save you from your sins. But that's the way God set it up. So you can reason, try to reason it out in your mind. You can try to figure things out. God says, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Repent. Believe. But childlike faith. He said, unless you become like a little child, You'll by no means enter the kingdom of God. That's what God says. So you need to deal with that. What will you do? And you stand before God and he says, why didn't you believe the gospel? Why didn't you repent? I had my, my servants tell you the truth and you refused and you walked by as if it didn't matter. You know, when it comes to eternity, this game today, this Atlanta, Atlanta United football or football soccer game, will not matter in light of eternity. The scores, people who score, all the saves there are, will not matter when you get into eternity. will not matter on Judgment Day, the, the end of this game. And so you must ask yourself this question. If it will not matter in eternity, does it really ultimately matter? Not that it's a sin to go to a soccer game or anything like that. But the fact is, the things that really matter, where is your focus? The focus of your life, is it upon things that really matter? Jesus, eternity, sin, salvation, the gospel? Or upon things that don't matter, like sports and hobbies, and things that really ultimately are a waste of time? Where is your focus? For the scripture says, see then that you walk carefully, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. God is calling you to redeem your time. And if you redeem your time properly, redemption will come into your life through the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're a sinner and continue in your sin, all that's left for you is the judgment and wrath of God. God is not pleased with sinners. People who follow Jesus Christ do not engage in sin. I don't know you. Pe people, Jesus, yeah, I can tell you're a mocker. That's what I can tell. Mockers and scoffers won't inherit God's kingdom. Is that your IQ? Yes, Jesus Christ is calling you to repentance. 
You won't be able to mock Jesus Christ on Judgment Day. When he returns, you won't be able to mock Jesus Christ. You won't flip him the bird. You won't put out your hand to shake him in a mocking fashion. Jesus Christ is going to deal with you in truth. Scripture says that he will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Do you see the separation between those who are righteous and those who are not righteous? There's a separation there by the Lord Jesus Christ between those who are righteous and those who are not righteous. And if you're not righteous, you'll be left outside the kingdom, be cast into the furnace of fire, where there'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. But the righteous, the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of his father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Hear the word of God. Believe the word of God. It's amazing to me that people are still wearing muzzles. All the things that have been done, people are still walking around with their muzzles on their face. They'll go put a muzzle on their face. They'll go to a basketball game last night or go to a soccer game today. They keep moving the goalposts. Two weeks to, you know, to flatten the curve. And then you gotta stay in your home for months. And then you gotta lose your job. And then you gotta put a mask on, you can't breathe. If you don't put a mask on, you won't be able to buy stuff. You won't be able to eat. And then you oh, we'll get the vaccinations rolled out. Once the vaccinations are rolled out, then you won't have to wear a mask anymore. Oh, no, sorry, you still have to wear a mask. And the people who have vaccinations are still spreading the disease. They're still spreading the disease. Lots of delusion. Lots of deception. People need to wake up. You know, we have a right, an inherent right, to breathe. We have an inherent right to our own health, to make our own choices. But these things are, you know, these kind of things are going to happen. In the end, the scripture talks about the mark of the beast system being employed. That if you do not take the mark of the beast, you cannot buy or sell. It's coming. These are precursors to prepare you to surrender your life for comfort, surrender your life for necessities. But the scripture says that Jesus Christ should be Lord of your life. That you should be surrendered to Jesus Christ as Lord, as King. He's the one that deserves your complete allegiance and complete loyalty. The Lord Jesus Christ deserves that. No sports team, no athlete deserves that kind of allegiance, that fanaticism. Jesus Christ died for you. The players of these two soccer uh, teams do not die for you. They don't shed their blood for you. They don't care about your soul. Well, yeah, yeah, I do, sir. That's why I'm here preaching about Jesus Christ. He died for you, which shows I do care for your soul. I'm asking you for money. I'm asking you to pay me millions of dollars to watch play a game, kicking a ball around the field. I'm asking you to do that. But your idols do. Your idols ask you to do that. Your idols ask you to pay them millions of dollars to get a ball around the field. That's what your idols do. But a real servant of God won't do that. It's amazing the delusion, the amount of delusion that goes around these days. You tell someone about Jesus Christ and about his coming in the flesh, his offer of grace and mercy and forgiveness. And the fact that those who don't repent of their sins and turn to him by faith will end up in hell. And they ignore, they're apathetic, they mock, they scoff. So tell someone about a disease, a virus, that causes death in less than 1% of people. And they put a mask on their face. It's amazing the amount of delusion there is.
and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. So there's, there's demons, there's spirits who are looking to deceive you, delude you, besides the world around us and all the agendas involved in the world around us. There's, there's demons who look to deceive because demons are just like Satan himself. They come to kill, steal, and destroy. They don't care about your life. But so many of you are so blinded to the spiritual realm and what is going on in it because you don't read the scripture. This talks about these very things. And you're going to have to give an account of your life to God. Don't deceive yourself. Don't allow yourself to be deceived by false doctrines and false teachers. You don't care about your soul. The main thing you should be concerned about throughout your whole life, whether today or tomorrow or the rest of your life, is this man named Jesus. All of history points back to him. All of history before him pointed towards him. He's a son of God. He's God in flesh. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The Father has given him the name of every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus says of himself, I am the way. I am the truth, I am the light. No one comes to the Father but by me. Scripture says, there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved besides Jesus Christ. Many of you are gonna to go to church tomorrow and you'll think that by going to a building on Sunday that you call a church that you're right with God. Going to a building doesn't make you right with God. Calling yourself a Christian does not make you right with God. You only get right with God through Jesus Christ. And if you are right with God, you'll live right. If you're living in sin, if you're sinning every single day in thought, word, and deed, that is not the common, the normal, biblical Christian experience. The normal, biblical Christian experience is one of holiness and righteousness of one of forsaking sin, truly forsaking it and living for Jesus Christ. That is the normal Christian experience. The normal Christian experience is not living wicked lives, dressing immodestly, having filthy words coming out of your mouth, watching wicked movies. That's not a normal Christian life, that's wickedness. That's nothing, there's nothing different between that and the world, those around you. And if you call yourself a Christian, you're just like the world around you, Come to a knowledge of the truth. You are not a Christian. You are a hypocrite. Hypocrites will not inherit God's kingdom. Hypocrites need to repent. You know, Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, had the harshest words for hypocrites. They were called Pharisees and Sadducees. These religious groups who were around, these religious leaders who were around. And he said, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There's nothing covered that will not be revealed. Jesus can deal with you in truth. So you think you're hiding your sin, you're hiding it from your friends, your significant other, your spouse. Well, God sees it all. There's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom he must give an account. The scripture says his eyes are on the ways of men and he sees all his steps. There's no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. So Jesus Christ sees. He sees it all. He even knows your thought life. He knows the motives and the tents of your heart. That's what caused you to tremble. It's what caused you to fear. And the scripture says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Are you ready for the secret things to be brought into judgment? You know, Jesus died for all. That doesn't mean that all are saved. In fact, according to Jesus Christ in Matthew 7, 13 through 14, most people are on the broad path that leads to destruction. Very few are on the difficult path that leads to life. So there's many and there's few. 
So many are going to hell. Very few are going to be a part of God's kingdom. That's what Jesus said. So even though Jesus Christ died for all and desires all to be saved, he desires for all to come to a knowledge of the truth, it doesn't change the fact that most will not be saved because most won't repent. Most won't surrender their lives to Jesus. And the scripture says, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. See, so many people are deceiving themselves. They hear the word of God. You may even go to a church building tomorrow and hear the word of God to some degree. But then you don't do it. And Jesus said, those who hear my words and do not do them, I will liken them to a man who built his house upon the sand. The winds and waves come and beat and blow against the house, and it fell, and great was his fall. But those who hear the words, my words, and do them, Jesus likens them to a man who built his house upon the rock. The winds and waves come and beat and blow against the house, and it fell. So Jesus makes a distinction between those who hear his words and do them, and those who hear his words and do not do them. That's the distinguishing factor. In fact, the more you hear the word of God, the less you obey, the less you obey the word you do hear from God's word, the greater judgment you will have, the more responsible you are for what you know. And God will judge you for what you know. So get right with God. Repent of all things you know you should not be doing or engaging in. Turn to Jesus Christ by faith and begin to do all the things he's called you to do. This is the word of God towards you. And if you don't do it, there'll be no laughing on Judgment Day. No smiles for the wicked on Judgment Day. Just the wrath of God. And the wrath of God is just, it is fair. So while God is choosing to deal with those who refuse to repent, who refuse to give their lives to Him, and go about their lives their own way. If I were to ask you just one question, it would reveal a lot about you. Who, who told you to come here today? See, well, Jesus isn't your Lord. That's it right there. Jesus is not your Lord. He's not ruling and reigning in your life. not telling you how to use your time. not telling you how to use your money. telling you how to spend your life. If Jesus Christ is not the one who does those things, then you're in charge and you're in Lord of your life. And here's the problem. You're not qualified. You're not qualified to be Lord of your life. Only Jesus Christ is qualified to be Lord of your life. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of of lords you know, if someone's going to control my life i want to be someone who is the wisest the smartest the most powerful the one who loves me that's jesus he's the only one that's qualified to be the lord of your life who makes the big decisions in your life who decides where you work where you live who you're married to who you're in relationship with how you raise your children who makes those decisions you well it should be god it should be God's word making those decisions because God is all wise. You know, Jesus came to give you life and life abundantly. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Drunkards will not inherit God's kingdom. Drunkards will end up in hell. Well, you don't have to go there, sinner. You can repent. Well, Catholics will go to hell most times, yes, because they don't know Jesus. I was a Catholic at one point in time, and I repented and got right with God. God wants you to repent as well. The Pope won't help you on Judgment Day. He will not stand in your place and, and you know, make a case for you and be your lawyer. Mother Mary will not help you on Judgment Day either. Praying the Rosary will not help you. Going to confession to uh, tell some priest the things you've done is not going to help you. You confess your sins to God. The scripture says, He who covers his sins shall not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes his sins shall find mercy. God wants you to have mercy. He doesn't take the light and the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn and live. God wants you to turn and live. He doesn't want you to die in your sins and go to hell. He doesn't want to give you what you deserve for your sins. He wants to give you what you don't deserve 
for your sins. So Jesus Christ, he loved you at the cross. In fact, the scripture says, for when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So how did God demonstrate that love? Not by dying for righteous people, good people, people who deserve it, because there is no such person, but by dying for the wicked, by dying for the ungodly. That's how Jesus Christ showed his love, his sacrificial love towards you, that he died for you and offered you what you don't deserve, even though you've been wicked, even though you've been unrighteous, even though you've been sexually immoral and drunkards and potty mouths and liars and thieves. Because you need help. Yeah, if you're really right with God, you'll care about the state of those around you. How can someone with eternal life not care about others having it? That's the most selfish thing you could do, to claim to have eternal life and not offer it to others is the epitome of selfishness. And what is the root of all sin? Selfishness. Selfishness. Because Jesus Christ said, if you want to come after me, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. And follow me. But you can say no. You can say no straight to hell if you don't repent. And then in the lake of fire, you're saying, why? Don't be shaking your head then, sinner. But Jesus Christ said, if you want to come after me, you must deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses life for my sake and the gospel shall save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul in the end? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? And then Jesus said this, if you are ashamed of me and my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation of you, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So when it comes to the Christian life, the Christian walk, we don't compartmentalize our life. Oh, I had someone said to me last night at the basketball game, oh, I go to church on Sunday and Wednesday. I'm going to the basketball game now. As a follower of Jesus, my whole life revolves around following Jesus, spreading the gospel, not around going to soccer games sometime and basketball games sometimes, and other times, maybe then I'll focus on Jesus. Now, Jesus is my primary focus in everything I do, I say, where I go, how I spend my time, how I spend my money. He is my focus because he's Lord of Lord. He's King of Kings. He is my life. He gave me eternal life. He's given me light. He's shown me the way. He leads me. He guides me. He loves me. He's proven his love to me, not just at the cross, but in so many other ways. By leading me and guiding me and providing for me, Jesus Christ. So if a Christian does not compartmentalize their lives, a Christian follows Jesus at all times, not just Sundays and Wednesdays, but on Saturdays, on Fridays. And those are the two days, Fridays and Saturdays, where sinners love to just send it up. You can tell a lot about someone's life, but what they do on Friday and Saturday nights, or even Saturday afternoons, how they spend their time, who's directing their life, who's leading them in this life. You tell a lot about people by these things. Need to repent. Give up your sins. Jesus Christ said, go and sin no more. If you're a drunkard, that, that means this. Stop being a drunkard. Turn to Jesus Christ. Be sober. You know, if you're sexually immoral, having sex outside of marriage, repentance looks like this. Turn from sin. Become pure and follow Jesus. Turn in faith to Jesus Christ who alone died for you on the cross, shed his blood for you. 
That's what repentance looks like. Repentance does not mean that you say sorry for something and keep on doing it. That's not what repentance looks like. Repentance means you're stopping it. You go and sin no more, as you said. Let's say worst thing happened to you. Won't be funny on Judgment Day. Make sure you post that picture everywhere, sinners. Post on Instagram. Let all your friends read the truth. So Jesus is the truth. Are you following Jesus today or are you following a lie? Jesus is the truth. He's not one of the truths. He's not an optional truth. He is the truth. Who are you following today? The truth or lies? You know, when it comes to going to, when I go to concerts and preach out in front of them, or I go to sporting events and preach out in front of them, I think this Bible verse from, from Romans 1 is very applicable. They worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So many people, they'll get their, their favorite jerseys to their favorite team with their favorite player's name on the back. Or look at the hats and the scarves and the blankets and whatever else about their favorite team and about their favorite player. But when it comes to following Jesus Christ, well, that's, that's between me and God. That's, that's private. Not the way it should be. So people worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. You know, common sense tells you that if Jesus Christ is the creator of all, that he's worthy of more worship and praise than the ones he has created, no matter how many skills and abilities those people have or how spectacular they are with their feet and a black and white ball. You know, someone's value goes above that. So that's the value you place on someone's life, how good they kick around a ball with their feet. Then what happens when they can't do that any longer? They cease to have value. Now you have value in God's eyes. You have value in God's eyes because you're made in the image of God. You have value in God's eyes because you're made in the image of God. You also have value in God's eyes because Jesus Christ died for you. That gives you value in life because Jesus Christ died for you. So it gives you value. That's how God values you and your soul by sending his son Jesus Christ to die for you. But you play it much, much less value upon your soul when you live for sin instead of living for Jesus. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Trying to have a good time. Well, if your, matter, your, your idea of a good time, sir, is sitting, it won't be a good time in hell. It won't be a good time in hell. And if Jesus Christ ruins what you call a good time, then you shouldn't be doing it anyway. But do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And then it says this about Christians, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. So God offers you cleansing, justif justifying, making you right with God by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary. And you must decide to follow Jesus because he's the only one that can lead you to life. Jesus, because he is the life. You must follow him. He defeated death. 
he rose from the grave defeating death. So he's the one to follow. No one else has done that. And Muhammad, he died, he was in the grave, now he's in, he's in Hades waiting for a judgment to go to the lake of fire for all his wicked prophecies, wicked things he said. Joseph Smith, the same thing. Gandhi, the same thing. Buddha, the same thing. All these people, they can't lead you past death. But Jesus Christ rose from the grave on the third day. He defeated death. He can lead you to life. He can lead you to holiness. He can lead you to a place where you need to be. He shows he cares for you and he loves you by dying for you. And he commands you to repent. He said, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way which leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Well, you don't have to go to hell. You can repent of your sins. You can write with God. Stop your sinning. Don't sin no more. Turn to Christ in faith. And you can plug your ears now, but on Judgment Day, I fear for you that if you end up in hell, this message will reverberate through your mind for all eternity, and combined with regret will be the worst torment in hell. Eternal regret. All the times that you, you knew you could have gotten right with God, you could have repented, turned to Christ by faith, and be made right with God. All the times you had a chance to do that, and you chose not to. What's that? No, sinner, I won't shut up. No, sinner, I won't shut up. You need to be quiet and listen to God's word. That's what you need to do. Be quiet and listen to God's word. Well, it's not me. It's God's word. Listen to God's word. Your filthy mouth shows your filthy heart. You have filthy language come out of your mouth that shows you have a filthy heart. Well, see, even that shows how filthy you are. Talking about body parts like that, it's disgusting. You're a pervert, is what you are. Only perverts talk like that. Drunkards will not inherit God's kingdom. If you're, your idea of a good time is getting drunk, getting wasted, getting buzzed, you won't be saying, yeah! in hell, that's for sure. No sinner, I won't be there. Don't be next to me. You'll only be next to me if you repent. It's the only way you'll be next to me is if you repent. And there's hope for you. Even that with your filthy mouth and your hateful heart, there's hope for you. That God can change you and deliver you and make you new. You don't have to be a sinner. Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Repent of your drunkenness. Repent of your revelry. Turn to Jesus Christ instead. He showed his love for you at the cross. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Well, don't, if you don't want to go to hell, then repent of all your sin. Repent of all your sin. There are a lot of people who say they don't want to go to hell, but they don't really mean it because they're not willing to do what it takes to stop it. No, sin is bad. That's the, by definition, sin is bad. That's why it's called sin. Sin is transgression of God's law. And God tells you not to be a sinner. So definitely bad. God wants you to stop being a sinner. God wants you to be holy instead. What's it going to take? Is that your IQ? Is that your IQ? Thanks for sharing that. I'm the number one preacher? Hail Thank Satan. you. I appreciate that. Hail Satan 666. I mean, what does that do to me? That hurts you. doesn't hurt me. You saying you hail Satan just telling the truth about yourself. But in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. You're too slow, sinner. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Nope. No high fives for you. Eh, you've been denied. You might know who you are, man. I'll give you a high five. Oh, it's not showing the love of God because I won't give him a high five and I don't even know who he is. Where do you get that in the Bible? Please show me the Bible verse for that. Not going to be able to. It's not in there. But the fact is, the scripture says, let little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. What's the works of the devil? Sin in your life. God calls you to repentance. Homosexuals and sodomites will not inherit God's kingdom. The prideful will not inherit God's kingdom. 
God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. If you have pride in your heart, whether it's about your, per your sexual perversion or something else, God will not give you grace. There'll be no grace. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Stop acting like a woman. Act like a man. That's so how God made you. God didn't make you to be a woman. He made you to be a man. Stop deforming what God made you to be. You can be puffed up when you're pride and act like a woman if you're a man now or act like a man if you're a woman. It's not going to help you on Judgment Day. God is calling you to repentance. Turn from all your sin and turn in faith to Jesus Christ. Repent, therefore, and be converted. Their sins might be blotted out. That times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. Hey, brother. You want to preach? The Bible says today is the day of salvation. That's what God says. Today is the day of salvation. Today is actually not the day for the Atlanta United soccer game. So many of you are looking forward to a soccer game, but you need to be looking forward to the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. And Jesus Christ says, because his kingdom is at hand, his kingdom is near. Wow, I mean, I had some in the bag. Uh, you can use them if you'd like. Okay. You need to repent of following man and the things of man. Because this world's passing away. Haven't any of you woken up in 2020? Many of you are still wearing masks on your face. You have fear of man. You have fear of death. The Bible says that you're held by the grip of the fear of death all day long. That's why you wear your masks. That's why. Because you have a fear of death, but you don't have an answer to death. The only answer to death is found in the Lord Jesus Christ who conquered death for you. He conquered death. That's the big problem that you have. The problem is not with the Nashville soccer team. The problem is with death that you're facing. The problem that you have is with your sin that you're holding on to that you won't let go of because of your pride. And you're so concerned of what other people will think about you. And the Bible says that's what we're like. All of us are like sheep that have gone astray. We've all turned to our own way. That's the problem. You're full of your own ways. You need to turn to the Lord and say, I'm no longer living to my I'm no longer seeking. I'm seeking you because if you seek his kingdom and his righteousness, that will last forever. But you know what? This game's going to be over, and what's it going to matter? It's going to matter zero. Right. Zero That's in right. eternity. It's going to mean nothing to you when you stand before God. You're not going to give an account for what team that you were a fan of. Do you realize that? You need to, you need to beat your breast and cry out and say, have mercy upon me, a sinner. That's what you need to do. That's what a wise man will do. A wise man won't exalt man, won't praise man, won't give your worship to man because he kicks a ball and a goal. You need to worship one who conquered death. Right. Because not a single soccer player that can conquer death out here. They might conquer the Nashville team, but they can't conquer death. You need a savior. That's what you need. You don't need a soccer team. Wake up. You don't need a soccer team. Atlanta, you need a savior. And he's the savior of the world. Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. Once you are smiling at their sin. Once you are covered with their sin. Once you don't care about their sin, he cares about you. While you're laughing about your sin and you comfort each other in your sin, you strengthen each other in your sin, and you think you're cool because you're all going the same direction. You're all on the broad way that leads to destruction, and that you comfort each other in that. You take comfort in that. But there's no comfort eternity. No comfort in eternity like that. There's only comfort in Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Jesus means salvation. That's why he was named Jesus. Do you realize that? That's why he was named Jesus, because Jesus means salvation. He wants to save you from your sin. It's not a head thing, it's a heart thing. And the reason that you have filthy communication coming out of your mouth is because you have a filthy heart. That's the reason. That's the evidence that you need a new heart. And Jesus Christ will give you a new heart. He did it for me. He did it for me. I'm not better than anybody in this whole world. I had a filthy heart. I had a filthy mind. I thought of filthy things. That's what I did, and I, I took pleasure in it. I loved it. I loved it. But God is faithful to show me the end. And he will show you your end if you'll cry out to him and you'll humble yourself. Show me my end. How many years do you have? 
How long is your life? A hundred years? What's going to matter in eternity? That's what you need to think about. What's going to matter a hundred years from now? Amen. This game won't matter a hundred years, years from now. This won't matter. As a matter of fact, this might be shame to you on Judgment Day. That you heard the preaching of the gospel. Amen. That Jesus Christ was reaching out to you. But you hardened your heart. And you entered into sin further. And you resisted the Lord. Oh, I don't want him to resist you on that day. Because Jesus Christ said, if you deny him, he'll deny you. That's the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's his very word. You need to take heed to the word of God. Not to what men say. Not to what men say. So many of you are following men. You're more concerned of what you're more concerned about, about what Fauci says than about what the Lord Jesus Christ says. So many of you are more concerned about that. Oh, but you need to wake up. You're gonna face God. You're on the Titanic, man. You're on the Titanic right now. Hey, they were partying on the Titanic. That's what they were doing. Yeah. And they said not even God can sink the Titanic. Can you think, what do you think about that now? Now that you know what happened to the Titanic, do you think that they were foolish? They were foolish to say God couldn't sink the Titanic, right? That's right. They were warned. They were heading into the icebergs, and you're being warned right now. You're heading into the Rock of Ages. You're going to give an account for your life, young man. You're going to give an account. And right now you're prideful. You better humble yourself, young man. God resists the proud. If you're prideful, you're going you're gonna to be an abomination before God. That's what the Bible says. It's filthy before God. Uh, it's ugly before God. In this world, this world thinks that pride is a good thing. So someone shoots a, a soccer ball in the goal, and, he, and he, he, he bangs on his chest. And everybody worships and claps their hands. That's idolatry, folks. That's idolatry. Right. You're more concerned with the things of men than the things of God. That's idolatry. And no idolater will enter the kingdom of God. And we love you, and that's why we're warning you. I am a former idolater. Yeah. I'm a former yeah. idolater. I worship men who could hit a baseball over the fence. I worship men who could shoot a three-pointer in a little basket. How foolish is that in the light of eternity, folks? God has put eternity in your heart. Humble yourself. Don't harden your heart against the Lord God today. How many days do you have left? How often is God going to plead with you and strive with you and reach out his hand to you? And you'll reject it. You need to fear the Lord. Fear the Lord and give him glory. Stop giving glory to man. Stop taking glory for yourself. Stop acting like you're a God because you're not a God. You're just a man. And what is man that he is mindful of us? What are we that God is mindful of us? What have we done to deserve what Jesus did for us? Nothing but sin. Nothing but sin. That's the only thing we can take responsibility for is our sin. That's it. That's all we have to give God is our sin. Are you holding got. on to your sin today? That's all we got, man. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're holding on to your sin, huh? It's going to take you to hell. You better repent. You're doubling down. You're going down, down into hell, sir, if you don't repent. That's right. You need to repent, sir. And God is faithful because he loves you. He loves you. He's not willing that you perish, sir. He's not willing that you perish, sir. Right now you're perishing. The Bible says if the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to you, if you smile at the gospel of what Jesus Christ did for you and dying a bloody, horrible death for you on the cross, and you smile and you continue in your drunkenness, you're perishing right now. That's what the Bible says. You're perishing. Yep, you're perishing. It's out of your own mouth, sir. Yep, every idle word a man speaks, he'll give an account for it in the day of judgment. That's the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. So remember that. Remember that. Those words that you said, I hope you repent that those won't come out on judgment day to haunt you for all eternity, sir. All eternity. Because Jesus Christ is coming back with 10,000s of his saints. He's coming back. His kingdom is near. He's coming with 10,000s of his saints to execute judgment on all. You can read it for yourself in the book of Jude. He's going to judge all. All the foolish things, all the harsh things that sinners have said against Jesus Christ in Jude, he's coming back and says he's coming to judge all that. Do you realize that? All you're laughing at Jesus, so many laughing at Jesus. So many laughing at Jesus. But what has he done for you? What has he done for you? He died for you? Are you willing to die for him? Are you willing to die for Jesus? So many acknowledge Jesus that he died for you, but are you willing to lay down your life for him? Because you can't have him unless you're willing to lay down your life for him. That's a fact. Jesus said, unless you pick up your cross and follow me, you're going to lose your life. Whoever seeks to save his life is going to lose it. If you keep your life and you say, it's mine, it's not yours. It's not yours. You didn't make yourself. 
You didn't make yourself. You didn't knit yourself together in your mother's womb. Stop, see, stop being so prideful and thinking that your life is your own. It's not your own. All souls belong to God. Your soul belongs to the Lord God. And you're going to give an account for your soul. And the soul that sins shall die. It's not just a physical death, it's eternal death. There's a second death, folks. You need to think about that. It's forever being separated from the love and grace and kindness of God. His kindness to you today. There's, there's the blue sky, sunshine. You have breath. You have eyes that see color. You have taste buds that taste. Some of you are using your taste buds that God gave you for wicked drunkenness. God gave you your taste buds. You're going to give an account for it. You're going to give an account for everything you did. Every thought, word that you have done, you're going to give an account for it. Solomon, King Solomon, he was the richest man that ever lived. The richest man that ever lived. He had everything. King Solomon had everything. And after he had everything, he called it vanity. He said it was emptiness. Emptiness. Vanity of vanities. At the end, he said this. What is the conclusion? Here's the conclusion. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's law. That's the conclusion that King Solomon, who had everything in this whole world, and he tried everything, he said it was empty. And it's all going to be empty to you, too. And none of you have the whole world. You don't have the whole world. That's why you're going in there to watch the game today. That's why you're going in there and you have tickets. You don't have the whole world. You don't own the team. You don't have the whole world. And Jesus said, what's it going to profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? What's it going to profit you? Nothing. Nothing. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's an everlasting kingdom. This world is perishing. Don't you realize that? That's why you're wearing your masks. That's why you're wearing your mask, because the Bible says pestilences would come in the last days. Pestilences would come in the last days. Lawlessness would come in the last days. That's what we see, lawlessness and pestilences. Oh, and many of you, you're so conformed to this world, you're so concerned what man says, you'll take the mark of the beast when it comes, because you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. And many of you, you're so in rebellion against God, you're ready to take the mark of the beast, and you're ready, ready to obey the Antichrist. You're being conditioned right now. You're following each other. You're doing whatever the government tells you to do. And when the government comes under Antichrist rule, if you don't repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're going to take the mark of the beast. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, there is no rest day and night forever and ever for those who take the mark of the beast. You need to wake up. You need to wake up, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to wake you up out of a sound sleep. The Bible says, awake, you who sleep, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light came in this world. He came in this world to show us our darkness. And Jesus said, he who follows me will not walk in darkness. If you're walking in darkness, don't deceive yourself. Don't, don't think you're right with God because you go to some building on Sunday. You're not right with God because you go to some building. Wake up. Wake up. You're not right with God because you go to building on Sunday. You're right with God if you go to building on Sunday. You're right with God if you go to building on Sunday. He's a liar. He's a liar. Let every man be a liar and God be true. So if anyone says, I'm God, he's a liar. Because you're made in the image of God. You didn't make yourself. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. That's what the Bible says. Is that you? The Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Is that you? Is that you? God. They're not soccer. You have God in your headlock, sir. You have him in your back pocket. You're deceived. You're deceived. He doesn't have you, sir. You need to humble yourself under his hand that he might lift you up out of your horrible pit of sin. And there's no pit so deep that he won't save you out of it. You're in a deep pit, sir. You know it. You know it. You're, you're with your friends in sin. You're with your friends in sin, so you comfort each other and you strengthen each other in your sin. You think they're cool. But hell is hot. Hell is very hot. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9, it's an unquenchable fire. Unquenchable fire. That's what Jesus Christ said. And we're warning you, you're headed there. An unquenchable fire. And there's weeping and gnashing of teeth in the lake of fire. And you're going to be ashamed. You need to be ashamed of your sin right now, sir. Be ashamed of your sin today that you're not ashamed forever in eternity in hell. What did he bring? What did I tell you to bring? That's the good news. We're warning you. And so we got to tell you the bad news, too. If you, unless you repent, you're going to perish. Jesus said you have to become like a little child to enter the kingdom of God. 
Yeah, he said you had to become like a little child. That's right, because you had to become innocent again. You had to become, I know you are. I know you are, don't you? Like a pig, like a pig rolling in the mire. That's right, but Jesus Christ can make you a new creation. You don't have to be a pig anymore. You don't have to be a sinner anymore. He can wash you and cleanse you and make you new, a brand new creation. What a wonderful hope. Oh, are you tired of putting your hope in man? Are you tired of putting your hope in the government of man? Anyone tired of that yet? Very tiresome following man. But Jesus Christ said, come to me and take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy, my burden is light, you'll find rest. Jesus will give you rest. Jesus loves the little children. That's right. Lord bless you. Lord bless you. So many some little children. The children are wiser than you hard-hearted adults. The little children are soft. They have soft hearts. And that's why Jesus said you have to be born again. You must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. You have to have a supernatural birth. away the truth because you want to live in unrighteousness. You want to live unrighteous. You don't want to submit yourself to God. He's the righteous one. He laid down his life. Jesus, the righteous one. None of us are righteous without what Jesus has done for us. Right. We need to put our faith in him and then we are saved. We're saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. But the grace of God is when Jesus became a man. He's the grace of God. The grace of God. He's full of grace and truth. And grace is when you get something you don't deserve, and we don't deserve what Jesus did for us. Are you trampling the blood of Jesus today? Are you treating what Jesus did for you as a common thing, like, like just another soccer game? Is what Jesus did for you in your heart, is it just like a, a soccer game? Or maybe less than a soccer game? Yeah, that's right. Is it less than a soccer game to you? Yeah. Oh, Jesus said, let the little children come to me, for the kingdom of God is such as these little ones. Right. And Jesus Christ said, unless you're changed, unless you're converted and changed and you, be, and you become like a little child, you won't enter the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus Christ said. So that means you have to humble yourself. You've got to humble yourself and get low like a little child, man. You've got to become a little child to enter the kingdom of God. The door of heaven is very low. You've got to humble yourself. You've got to get on your face. You're exalting yourself right now, sir. You know what Jesus Christ said? He's going to humble you. Right. He's going to humble you. Right. If you exalt yourself, you have a promise. If you exalt yourself in your pride, God's going to humble you. And you think, well, God hasn't humbled me yet. God hasn't done anything to me yet. Wait for Judgment Day. Oh, I don't want you to wait for Judgment Day, though. The Lord's waiting to be gracious to you. You realize that? That's what the Bible says. He's waiting on you. The Lord is waiting to be gracious to you. Will you come? Will you come? Jesus Christ says, come to me. He's calling you to come. His hand is outstretched to you all day long. Can you believe it? God Almighty, he loves you, and you live in rebellion against him, and his hand is outstretched to you all day long. His nail-pierced hand is outstretched to you all day long, even though you're stiff-necked and rebellious. Stiff-necked and rebellious. Yeah. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Is that you, ma'am? That's many of you. He who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Read it for yourself, John chapter 3. Hey, hey, turn your smile upside down, man. Turn your smile upside down. Let your laughter be torn to, mo turn to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord that he might lift you up. Some of you, 
Your team might lose today. You realize that? Your team might lose today, and you might be sad. You're going to be sad. I know you're going to be sad because your soccer team lost. You know, some of you get sad when your soccer team loses. Yes, and you think about it, and you replay it, and you think, oh no, if he would have only done this, if he would only pass to him, and if he would have scored that, we would have won. You need to think about your soul that way. That's right. I don't want you to be on judgment and thinking, oh no, if I would have listened to those preachers, if I would have repented, if I would have had godly sorrow, not sorry that my soccer team lost, but sorry that I sinned against God in the light of his love for me on the cross. And repented. Soccer is God's oh, the Bible says that on Judgment Day, many are going to rise. There's a resurrection day coming. When you die, that's not the end of it. That's not the end. You need to know that when you die, it's not, it's not over. There's a resurrection day. And on resurrection day, some are going to be raised to everlasting life, and some are going to be raised to everlasting shame and everlasting contempt. You know what contempt is? It's when you hate yourself for all eternity. Everlasting contempt. If you don't repent and you don't stop mocking God, and you don't stop rebelling against Him, and sinning against the love of God for you, then on Judgment Day, you're going to have shame and contempt. That's what it says in Daniel chapter 12. You can read it for yourself. Many of you have Bibles. That's, that's more judgment for America. To, to whom much is given, much is required. That's the truth. And you have a Bible that you're not reading or obeying. I mean, it's, more light, it's more I light on Judgment Day that you're going to be accountable for. Some of you go to church, you hear the word of God, but you continue in your sin. You continue in your sin, but the Bible says, shall we continue in sin that God's grace might abound? God forbid. God forbid. That's not God's will. That's right. That's not God's will. You know what God's will is? God's will is that none perish but all come to repentance. You know what repentance is? It would be like you leaving the soccer game today, getting out of line, going back, getting in your car, and crying out to the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. I want you more than a soccer game. I want you, Jesus Christ, more than my life. I want your life more than my life. If you're willing to do that, he'll give his life to you. It's called the great exchange. It's an exchange. That's right. That's the deal. Jesus Christ will give his life to you if you give your life to him. That's the deal. And I'll tell you what, if somebody offered you, if a rich man, Ted Turner, if he offered you a million dollars because he wanted to do some uh, philanthropic type of service to mankind, and he offered you a million dollars, and it wasn't counterfeit, you would receive it. You would receive it. But Jesus Christ is offering you his very life and you reject it. You reject it. But if someone offered you a million dollars and he said, you just have to give me one dollar and I'll give you a million dollars, you would do that. In a heartbeat, you would do that. Because many of you just love money. You love money more than God. Whatever you love more than God, that is your God. That is your God. Whatever you serve and listen to more than God, whatever you pay attention to more than God, that is your God. And everybody has a God. Everybody has a God. You all are serving a God today. Whatever it is, whatever it is telling you what to You know, who told you to go to the game today? You, that's right, because you are your God. And you tell yourself what to do. Maybe for most of you, you are your God. You are your Lord. And you tell yourself what to do, right? That's right. It's your confession that you think you're God. And you're in control of your own life. But when you die, all control will be taken from you. It's all going to be taken from you. You need to give up control today. Surrender. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washes it white as snow. Jesus says, come, let us raise it together. He's with you. The Lord can raise it with you. If you'll humble yourself and you'll come to him, say, oh, Lord God, it's hard. The sin in my life, it has a hold on me. I don't want to live in sin anymore. I don't want to be a drunkard anymore. I don't want to be in pride anymore. I don't want to be in rebellion anymore. I don't want to be in homosexuality anymore. I don't want to be in sin anymore. I want to be free. I want to be free indeed. If you come to Jesus like that, he will set you free. Jesus Christ will set you free today. He will. He does. But you know what? 
Mockers will enter into Hellfire. You're a mocker. No, you don't want to go there. You won't even put your hand on a burning hot stove for five minutes, sir. You will not be able to survive in hell. You will not party in hell, sir. And therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Because we know the terror of the Lord, we are persuading you for you to, for you to be reconciled to God. Your sins will separate you from your God. But Jesus Christ died on the cross to bridge the gap. You're separated from God right now if you're in sin. And Jesus Christ wants to bring you back into relationship with God. That's what he came to do. Just let him win your soul. You know, the real winner is not the winner of the soccer game or the fan of the winning team. It's the one who puts the stand. Do you want to use one of these signs, bro? There we go. Yeah. It's too windy for me to hold two at one time anyway. Yeah. No, you're lying. You're actually lying to yourself. You're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself. Because if you saw sin in its raw form with no pleasure, the only reason you continue in sin is because there's pleasure in sin for a little while. It's for a little while. But on judgment day, all the pleasure will be about in sin. And then you will experience sin in its raw naked form with no pleasure. And God's wrath will be poured out. We don't want that for you. If you live in rebellion against God, you'll end up, you're an enemy of God, you can't win. You can't win, you're on the losing team. You need to get on the winning team. That's Jesus Christ. He died the death in your place. He left you at the cross. He took your place on the cross. But we deserve so much more than a cross. We deserve hell fire. That's what God says. That's what we deserve. We deserve the wrath of God for our sins, not just the cross. We deserve hell fire. That's what we deserve. And if you, until you come to that place where you acknowledge and you confess that you're a sinner and you confess that you deserve God's judgment, you can't be saved. You have to confess that you deserve God's judgment, that your sin is worthy of hell, and that you need the Savior. And stop ignoring Him. Stop ignoring Jesus Christ. Because if you ignore Him, He's seeking to save you right now. But if you keep ignoring Him on Judgment Day, He's going to say, depart from me. Depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness, depart from me. Mark, you can read it in Matthew chapter 7. Actually, that's the verse that got a hold of me in my life. I, I, I was reading the Bible. I was a Catholic. I didn't know Jesus Christ. I didn't know him. I was a Catholic, but I didn't know the Lord. And I started reading the Bible for myself. And I read in Matthew chapter 7 that on the day of judgment, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. He said, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. Didn't I do many wonders in your name, many works in your name? And he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness, depart from me. Solamente Jesus es el camino al cielo. No otro camino. No confies en la iglesia católica. Solamente confía en Jesús. Arrepentate ahora. Arrepentate ahora. Hey, Chris, if you want, I can put one speaker over here and I can stand next to it. I'll, I'll take my speaker over there and let you plug into the other one. Okay. Yeah. Need that other. Blow away. <laughs> Need the other. Hold on tight to this. Did you see how fast the wind launched this up in the air? Yeah. Yeah, the wind's like gusts of like 20 miles per hour. Bible says that it's appointed once for man to die, and then after this, the judgment. What we do when you stand before Jesus on judgment day? Because your favorite soccer player will not be able to save you on that day. He will stand in judgment just like you will. My friends, if you love sports more than you love God, it won't profit you anything on the day of judgment. You continue to reject God's hand, his offer of salvation. 
then he will reject you on judgment day. There will be no parties in hell. There will be no parties in hell. No, there's not. There's no party in hell. There's gonna be a lake of fire. You're never gonna be able to stop swimming. You're gonna drown in fire. And we don't want you to go there. You can repent today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today, not tomorrow, not next week, but today is the day of salvation. But many of you are on the broad path and you need to come off the broad path and get on the straight and narrow. But only few will find that path. What path are you on today? Are you a mocker? Are you a scoffer? Are you a fornicator? Are you an idolater? If you're idolizing sports, if you love sports more than you love God, my friends, you will not see heaven. But we want you to come to heaven. But you must, you must cry out to God. You must cry out to God. Repent of your, your, your idolatry. Oh, my friends, turn your laughter into weeping and your joy into mourning. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. It won't be fun and games on Judgment Day. It will not be fun and games on Judgment Day. If you love your sin, you need to repent. If you're in sin, you need to repent. I'm not, I don't think I'm better than you, but the difference between a sinner and a saint is a sinner is someone who is living in darkness and practicing darkness. But someone who is a saint has turned from their darkness, has turned from their darkness and turned to God's light. Repent. Repent. Turn from your drunkenness. Turn from your idolatry. Many of you would say that God loves you, but do you love God? Because Jesus himself says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So ex examine yourself, do you love God? Because it's not a one-way relationship, it's a two-way relationship. Try that in a marriage. If you just have a one-way relationship in your marriage, it's gonna fail. And if that's the same thing with God and you, it's gonna fail on Judgment Day. My friends, it's a two-way relationship. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So he loved, he loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son to suffer and die. But what are you doing now? What are you doing now? Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Are you obeying him? Have you turned from your sin? Have you been born again? Oh, my friends, have you been born again? Many people claim all day that they've been born again just because they've been baptized. But that's no indicator of, of, of being born again. When you become born again, you'll have all new desires. You'll have a desire to read God's word, to live holy, to live righteously, because the grace of God will teach you to live that way. The grace of God is not just a free ticket to sin all you want. Because in Romans 6, it tells us that, that should we continue in sin that God's grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? This is talking about Christians who have been born again. How shall we? that are dead to sin live any longer therein. Oh my friends, many people are carrying each other on in their sin, but we're trying to pull you off the, the broad path that's leading you to hell. But my friends, we can't force you to love Jesus. We can't force you to repent. You must do it out of your own free will. Your own free will. You have the free will to turn from your sin or to continue in it. But it's up to you. It is up to you, my friends. What will you do with such a great offer of salvation? Will you continue to ball it up and throw it in the trash? Or will you accept it? Will you realize that you're a sinner and that you need Jesus, that you need to turn from your sin? Jesus said himself that he's not come for the righteous, but sinners. To call sinners to repentance. Are you self-righteous today? Do you believe that you're better than God? That you don't need God in your life? Do you believe that? Because if you do, the Bible says that God has not come, that God, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. So if you're prideful, my friends, it's, it's gonna do you no good. God will resist you. But if you humble yourself and realize your need for Jesus, His grace, His grace, What'd you say? 
read the Bible. It says God resists the proud. That's a prideful statement right there. God will resist you if you're still in your sin. But if you humble yourself and you want to come out of your sin, he will, he will give you grace. You must humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. The Bible says if you love this world more than you love God, the love of God does not abide in you. The love of God it does not abide in you. Does the love of God abide in you? Many of you would say yes. That's wickedness. You need to turn from your lewdness. You need to turn from your lewdness. Turn from your fornication. Turn to Jesus Christ. Yeah, you may like fornication, but the Bible says sin is only pleasurable for a season. It's only pleasurable for a season. And when you die, when you die, it won't be pleasurable anymore. And that's what we're trying to get you to realize, is that this sinful world, it will not be pleasurable when you die. You know, there's people in hell right now that's had the same attitude as you. My friends, they live the best life now, and now they're living the worst life forever. They're living the worst life forever. Oh, my friends, come to Jesus. This is the cry in our hearts today, to see you come to Jesus. Every idle word you speak will be held accountable. Anything you say against against God, if you blaspheme his name, it will all be held accountable against you on judgment day. Anything you say or do to us doesn't affect us. We humble ourselves to preach the word because we want to see you saved. We don't care what you can do to us. In fact, the Bible says that the fear of man is a snare, but those who put their trust in the Lord shall be saved. So we put our trust in God, and we don't, we don't fear what man can do to us. We fear what God can do to us. We don't fear what you say or what you can do, because we fear what God can do. We put our trust in God, and we're saved. The Bible says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Anything man can do to us, oh, my friends, God can do much worse. And, and he will do that to sinners if they don't repent. Why fear man? Many of you don't want to accept Jesus because of what your friends and family think of you. Many people, many people are so scared of what man thinks rather than what God thinks of them. Many of you fear COVID rather than God. You fear, you fear a virus rather than fearing what God can do to you. But you know, those who try to save their lives will lose it, the Bible says. And those, those who lose their life, for Jesus' sake, shall find it. Have you, have you forsaken everything in this world? Have you forsaken sin and come to Jesus to find eternal life? Because only Jesus Christ can give you abundant life, eternal life. You know, the Bible says that it's appointed once for man to die. And then after this, the judgment. So as soon as you die, you will be awaiting judgment. You wouldn't even want to ask for forgiveness because your sin is ever before you. You can't ask for forgiveness in hell. That's why mercy is today. That's why God's arms are stretched out wide today. He wants every one of you to come to him by repenting of your sins. After all, that's God's will, that none should perish but come to him, that all men everywhere come to him by repenting of their sins. Don't be deceived. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor, idolat nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor, nor homosexuals. See, that's a big one. A lot of people think it's hateful to warn people that they're on their way to hell. You gotta turn from your sin. It won't be fun and games on Judgment Day. You're on the broad path now, but you can be on the view, the, the, the straight and narrow path today, which only few will find. If you're if you're a professing believer, and you think that your church attendance will get you into heaven, oh my friends, you're in for a rude awakening if you die that way. 
this is why Jesus, he says that you must be born again. You must be born again. Yes, we were all born once by, by our moms, but you must be born by the Spirit, the Bible says. By the water and Spirit. When you come to God, there must be an inward change and an outward change. Your entire countenance must change. Jesus says himself, if you deny me, I will also deny you. That's such a fearful thing because if what you do with this life will determine how you spend all of the next life in eternity, whether that be heaven or hell. Well, lesbians need to repent too. You need to turn from your sin. A lot of people don't like to acknowledge homosexuality as sin. But, but sin, sin is what will separate you eternally from God. Pride comes before the fall. Pride comes before the fall. Pride comes before the fall, my friends. A lot of people like to to say pride, pride month, pride parade. But my friends, I'm going there to preach, yes. I pray that you repent. Pray that you turn from your sin. Homosexuals need repentance too. And homosexuals think that it's hateful to warn them of the, the judgment of God. But my friends, it's only love to tell you that you're going to hell to turn from danger, the danger that awaits you. Picture repentance as a U-turn sign. You're on your way to hell now, and if you keep going, you're gonna fall off to the pit into the abyss. But there's a U-turn sign at the end of that road that's going to turn around. To turn around, to go to Jesus. But many people want to continue down that path because it seems so pleasurable. Many people want to continue down that path because it seems so pleasurable. There's also a lot of procrastinators that want to procrastinate and play Russian roulette with their souls. Oh, I'll get right with God, you know, next year when I get old. Not even knowing if you have the rest of today. That's such a foolish thing. A foolish mindset to have. The Bible says in James 4, 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If you're a friend of this world, if you try to please man more than you please God, the Bible says you're at enmity with God, that you need to repent of your sins. You need to come to Him. You need to humble your hearts. God will have mercy on you. Yeah, I started at 3.30, it's like 4 o'clock now. So. There'll be, there'll be some more straggle stuff from the Marta. But it's probably going to be few and far between. The Bible says in 1 John, chapter 1, verses 6 through 10, it says, If we say that we have fellowship with Him, with Jesus, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Have you come to Jesus, my friends? Have you been cleansed of all your sin? Because if you're still living in your perpetual sin, if you're practicing unrighteousness, the Bible says the unrighteous will not inherit God's kingdom. If you don't think you need to repent, you are self-righteous, you're guilty of self-righteousness. And Jesus says he's not come for the righteous, but for sinners, for sinners, to transform you from a sinner to a saint. But you must turn from your darkness and turn to his marvelous light. 
The Bible says to love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world or the things in the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is not in him. Many of you 
no one verse in the Bible, judge not lest ye be judged, but you don't continue to read on what Jesus was actually speaking about. He was speaking about hypocritical judgment, hypocrisy. How can you, how can you say that you're in sin when you try to tell someone else to come out of sin? That's hypocritical judgment. And we will all stand and give an account for how we lived our lives on Judgment Day. Oh, well, it grieves my heart when you when you laugh and mock, because God is not mocked. The Bible says, God is not mocked. He will have the last laugh. Not you. Don't you realize that He, God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, will have the last laugh if you continue hardening your heart. Praise God for God's mercy. Praise God for his mercy. He is able to pardon you from all your iniquity. He is able to make you white as snow. He is the only one that can cleanse you of all sin. Not some self-help program. Not some YouTube video that tells me how to stop doing this sin and that sin to break this addiction or that addiction. Only Jesus can break the chains. Only Jesus can cleanse you. His blood can cleanse you from all sin. Many people want to go through a different doorway to the Father. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the truth and the life. That's so immature, ma'am. You don't want to hear the good news, but you're going to wish you heard it on Judgment Day. You're going to wish you heard it on Judgment Day. I wish you would repent. I wish you would repent and turn from your wickedness and turn to God's righteousness and be converted. Be converted, the Bible says. You must become born again. What is your idea of a good time? Is it to get drunk? To get a hangover the next day? To, to have sex outside of marriage? Oh my friends, every idle word that you just spoke, that just right there will be held against you on judgment day. That's not good. The good news is that you can repent of that. That you can turn from your sin. You need to repent. You need to repent. No, Jesus doesn't love you the way you are. He wants you to repent. Show me where it says that in the Bible. It says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But many of you don't know what believing in Jesus means. Many of you believe that believing in Jesus, what it, what it means is that you just say it with your mouth. That you just say, oh, I believe, and that you're good. You're, you're on your way to heaven. My friends, that's nowhere in the Bible. You can, you can isolate scriptures to form that, that damnable heresy, that doctrine. But that's nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it teach to just say with your mouth, to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. It says it, but it doesn't say it in the context that many of you believe it. God bless. The Bible says you must confess and forsake your sins. Confess and forsake. You can't just confess without forsaking your sins. And you can't forsake your sins without confessing. You must confess and forsake your sins. Because when you confess and then forsake your sins, that shows that you're truly sorry, that your confession was not in vain. But if you just confess, if you just confess your sins, my friends, if there's no forsaking, you're just going to go right back to it. That's what repenting is. It's turning from your sin and turning to Jesus Christ. Oh, my friends, if you're going to reject Jesus all the way to the grave, I fear for you. 
if you're really going to reject him all the way to the grave, oh my friends, this will only be your best life now because it won't be your best life in eternity. But you can have, you can have your best life in eternity today. You can have eternal life. Don't you know that if everyone followed the Bible, there would be no need for cops, for ambulances, for, for many things. But that's just to say the least. There would be no more crime if everyone would follow Jesus' teachings. But everyone says that it's, that it's a book of fairy tales. But my friends, you've never read the word to, to see it yourself. And if you have read the word, you only read something that you don't uh, that you don't agree with. If you saw that you need to repent of your sins, and you said, all right, this Bible isn't true. My friends, you're only, you're only suppressing the truth and unrighteousness, the Bible says. You're only suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. But if you will humble yourself, if you will humble yourself before God, just get down on your face and cry out for Him to forgive you, to forgive you of all your sin. with somebody's wife. Whatever it is, God knows what you went through. And his arms are just extended out to you to pull you out of whatever you, you did to forgive you. But you must ask for forgiveness and forsake your sins. It all starts with you, my friends. The ball is in your court. Jesus died on the cross. And it's not automatic that you're forgiven. The ball is in your court to ask for forgiveness and to live a born-again life from here on out. You know, when you come to Jesus, when you have repented of your sins, you enter into a race. You enter into a race. Well, you need to repent. You need to turn from your sin. You got a testimony? Okay, can I hear it? Says, what's my name? Because they say my name's John Doe and it's 108. Do I look 108? Oh, doctor, doctor. Like, your speech is off. Are you blind? Is there anything wrong? Because you got a massive stroke seizure. Your kidneys failed. You got hydrocephalus, diabetes, and tippies. Uh, on top of that, you got a fractured rib. Two fractured ribs. Can I ask you a question, sir? Yes, sir. I don't mean to interrupt you. Are you right with God? Uh, this is a decab. Uh, Are you right with God? Huh? Are you right with God? Yes, I'm right with God. How do you, how do you know that? Uh, from that experience, well, I, I, just, I was crippled for four years. Nobody talked to me besides God. But how does someone know they're right with God, though? Um, People say I'm, I don't know, call, this is my definition. I do want to tell others to say what you want from me. I adhere to the Bible. I believe in it. I really do. My family curses it. That's up to them. But I know me, and I know my heart's pure. And I have repented for my sins, okay. which used to be a hate myself. So you live for Jesus now? I feel sorry for myself. I'm suicidal. I don't feel it. Mom and daddy don't give me any of this much money. That guy's a piece of crap. I'm walking, talking, I can do yoga and all that. Why, what, in a wheelchair. why are you drinking that, though, if you're right with God? Oh, uh, some guys. I don't think I follow Jesus I'm hearing that. I'll dump him. That'll be very interesting, sir. No, it's not about me, sir. It's about doing what's right. Yeah, no. I understand. Like, Jesus wouldn't lead you to drink that. That's for sure. No. And I'm a wooden smoker. I have a stress in my life. Like, uh, my father just died. My uh, son slash nephew just died. I raised him for 18 years. Getting him in the Air Force. It was scholarship.
you have stress in your life, the word, the place to go is Jesus. Yeah. Not, not, yeah. It's not alcohol I or smoking. Or... From not giving up on shit. Cause that mean, I spend more time with that yeah, just my yeah. life than I than I do any, any person in my life. He was me. He was the person. He was the Robbing houses and trying to keep the shoot over there. That's just robbing them. I come back, I'm more on work, I was working politics for some time, so downtown. Okay, yeah, coming home from work, playing with you and shit. Bob's like, he's stuck in the dope house. I'm like, oh, that's just not work. But no, he's having an asthma attack and they're holding his leg. They smoke cigarettes. I mean, of course, they're like, come on, dude. Like, I've already, I've taught you, like, do your life not to do stuff like that. And I'm not being cool with that. I'm being, like, very understandable. You know, I mean, you had no father. Like, my dad was crazy as hell. And I took off. Right? So, like, I'm like, okay. Sir, your, our testimony now back to is, me being is, a wheelchair, our, right? our, our testimony is not based upon all the bad things that happened in our life. I'm non denominational. Our testimony is what Jesus like Christ has done in our life and changed us. That's yeah, what our yeah. testimony is. That might, yeah, my testimony we don't, we don't, is we don't, what got me into believing. But we don't, we don't exalt the bad things that happened to us. No, I, if you hold our, our focus should be more on what Christ has done in us. Yeah, you got to move forward. If you hold hate. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like you, you are moving forward. Oh, no, no. I was just telling you my testimony. I got emotional about my neck. Well, okay, so I, I just want to point out some things. Yeah, so, no, like... So, so, so within this, I, I, I haven't been listening the whole time, okay. but, but what I what I heard, I have heard is this, well, sir. I'm, I'm not racist, right? It's that you, uh, you used filthy language. Jovial guy. But using filthy language, you were, you were drink, I mean, drinking alcohol. My, my dad, yeah. But no, there's, 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 there's no excuse, there's no excuse. No, no, it's an excuse, you're just, right. No, no, just I'm trying to improve, I'm not a perfect guy. Well, it's not, it's not about improving, it's about repenting. Yeah. So, so when someone, when I, when I became a follower of Christ, before that, just about every other word out of my mouth was a cuss word. Okay? I used to cuss every day. Well, I'm just, I'm, but I'm just, well, it hasn't been fixed. Lost a couple jobs. It hasn't been fixed. Yeah, yeah. So, but when Christ changed me, Christ changed me, it stopped. I have a muscle movement disorder, Parkinson's, so don't mind my I don't, no, sir. I just, let's not justify it. Or it stopped. Yes. And mine did too. And, like, I'm just having a really bad day, man. And, like, I try to get my identity back yet again. Yeah, I gave it. You know, you know what I found though is that when when there's a bad day or something bad happens to us, it squeezes us, right? And whatever comes out of us is what's in us. Yeah. You know, so if I'm having a bad day, <laughs> yeah. I hit my my thumb with a hammer. I'm doing some carpentry work. Yeah. Ow! Do I start cussing? No. Do I start blaspheming God's name? I, that might no. be the one time I might not be able not to cuss is when I've stubbed my toe on a nail or stepped on something really hard. But other than that, I controlled it very well. I'm, I'm just, I'm just want to explain to you, sir, that, that the, 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 the flesh is being manifested. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Okay? 
but the flesh is manifesting your life, drinking, smoking cigarettes, filthy language, that's no different than the world. Yeah, and, 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 and trying your best to stop those things is not going to help anything either. What you need is an inward transformation that will make you never want to do those things again. May I say something? My friends say, why are you homeless? You're this, you're that. Why are you so happy all the time? Why are you guys? Why do you have four cars, a two-story house, a wife, four kids, and you're pissed off all the time? The money doesn't buy happiness. And I know that for a fact. Okay? That being said, um, taking God into your life might help. Oh, you and your God stuff, they say. Oh, well, okay. What's I said, though? It's not about adding God to your life. Well, no. You actually believing and going through a struggle and, 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 and understanding that, oh, shoot. I've been lying to myself all these years and pretending not to. Because really, like, I've been believing God since I was born. Right? I didn't go to, like, wasn't raised Catholic and my parents were. But I went to uh, Bible school and stuff. And I always walk around like you got a WWJD or stuff. But I act like it's not cool to see you from God, so I can turn off. Which I'm shutting. And that's disrespectful and so well. Gather more of my mental state. Now I've tried to walk that path through my whole life. It's like two times. Well, right. mental state is in Christ. Um, so even like with she's a Christian, we, we don't have we don't have depressions, we don't have bipolar, we don't have no, schizophrenia, don't we don't take medication. They like those, like um, schizophrenia, man. But that was through the decap kind of thing. things are actually not good for you. I know, but if I don't take him, like, literally, like, like, like yeah, like, I'm so positive, because I'm so much sure I'm positive as well. Yeah. And I don't want to be, it's very painful, and it causes, literally, your muscles to cramp up, and your lungs to tighten up, and you'll have constant anxiety, it's not even psychological anxiety, it's a Obviously, there's no problem with getting help with physical issues, yeah. but these like, supposed mental disorders. The chocolates, though, that's right? not. Uh, well, I got to cut down on my medication because I think I'm not going to be on the right flow and all this stuff. I'm supposed to get some free drugs. It's all for that. It's a kidney failure and one of the right drugs. And we got a biopsy and see if it's cancer. Yeah. We're going to have a Like, too many problems, I keep throwing it back. Yeah, good philosophy, man. Yeah. And like, uh, it sounds like a crazy, but I gotta tell you, I don't know why, my cartel is not weird. Well, my, my, you know, when I <laughs> speak to someone, sir, my, my job is to determine yeah, the crazy or not. My job is to figure out whether they're right with God or not. Yeah, you know, as a doctor, it's like, scripture. Like, Texas, his name and never got suffix on my ID, mother of mine. I became him somehow. And I didn't know that uh, he was molesting kids in Texas after I broke into his computer after he went to his funeral last year. And I uh, was told to take his name and the throne of this freaking, like, I don't know what the hell, child sex trafficking thing, all that. 
Yeah, see, that's, 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 so that's, that's, right there is an example of what I'm talking about. It's about language, but like, no, 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 it's, it's not boring. about it's not about me excusing your language. True shit, but but, but this true stuff. Well, see, they, you keep saying sorry, but you keep doing it, which means you're really yeah, not yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, but like, means you're I'm really not, not sorry. really that sorry. I'm yeah. being honest. You're not I'm sorry. just trying to get it out. But I'm just explaining to you that what's what's coming out of your mouth, according to the scripture, reveals the state of your heart. So I I understand you've been through a lot. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not denying any of that stuff. Uh, no, no, no. This is what Jesus says. Out of the mouth comes the overflow of the heart. I'm sorry. That's what the words Jesus said. I'm just giving you the words. No, listen, listen, listen. Just, just listen for a second. Listen for a second. You're right. you, you can't justify yourself. I'm trying to give you the word of God. The word Jesus says, by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man brings forth evil things. And so it's not a matter of I have a good heart, but I keep having filthy things in my mouth. That's impossible. Impossible. Question. The word of God says something different. What is the most important thing to say? Demons believe and tremble. Demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know a foolish man that's me? Without works, it's People dead. Question me and say, did, did you hear that? Though? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Yeah, you're pretty quick. Then, just, 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 okay, I'll, I'll speak more slowly. Okay. Uh, this is from James two. I like the Lord. You say you believe there is one God. You do well. But even demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Okay, so, so you say you believe in Jesus, you believe in God. But without, without being an advocate for him. But your, no, your life hasn't changed. Your life has not been changed. You need to humble yourself. Well, I mean, listen, I mean, I understand as, as a father of Jesus, I have other brothers around me who, who help me, who keep me accountable. But, but if, if, if people around me have to, have to come back to me all the time. No, no, no. That's more of an outward reformation than an inward transformation. So, so if, if I've I've talked to someone recently who he's pleading with me to he wants to come visit and he wants to be amongst other saints of God, and I asked him, I said, is there any unrepentant sin in your life? Well, it definitely isn't yours. I say, come out of your mouth just today. So definitely is, and, and drinking and smoking. And as soon as we leave, we're probably picking this up back up. So, so, what I, what I, so what I'm trying to explain to you is, what you really need is Jesus to change you. And money. That has no, no. Don't, don't, don't go off. Don't, don't go off the direction. Don't go off the direction. Just listen to this. I need Jesus to change you. Because anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All the old things have passed away. All the old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. That hasn't happened to you. It's obvious. And I'm just judging a tree by its fruit. I walk up to a tree and there's apples on it. I'm not going to declare it an orange tree. Okay? You're not an orange tree. You're an apple tree right now. You're, you're still in your sins. And I don't want you. I don't want you. Listen, I don't want you to deceive yourself because you've had bad things happen to you, and you and you've and you've tried to maintain in the flesh your sanity. Okay? You try to maintain your sanity in the flesh that you think you're right with God because you're a good guy and like the most people around you. You can't compare yourself to other people. You got to get right with God. No, I, I don't. And that's one thing I, that I've never done. But I compare myself to myself and I'm too hard on myself. And then I beat up on myself. And then I praise you guys and I say, hey, will it be a better day? This, that, the other. My nephew is the other day still. Yeah, because it's in well, let me just say this about your nephew. I don't know anything about your nephew, but if, if he's there, he can leave him there. Yes, and, and, and if he's well, he's there. I don't know that, but I'm just he's telling you, there. if he is there, he ain't leaving there ever. And if he's not there, he's never getting there. Okay, yeah. those are the facts. And so, God doesn't want you praying to dead people. Okay, God wants you praying to Him. But he's a non-corporal spirit, no? What's that? He's like a non-corporal spirit. No, no, if he, if, if, if he is right, if, he's, if he died in a good standing with God. Yes, he did. Well, I don't know if he did or not. I'm, I'm uh, I, I can tell but if, if he's born again, he's yeah. turned from his sins, forsake him and trust in Christ, and lived a holy life, then he's in upper Hades awaiting the resurrection of the dead. Drugs. He was going back to the Air Force that I got him in. Okay, but that doesn't make part of God. And then, and, but, but then... But listen, listen, getting off drugs and going to the Air Force does not make part of God. Him. So I'll make you right with God. And, uh, okay. GBI is the best game, so. Yeah, but you understand that, but but getting off the of drugs and going to the Air Force, that make you right with God. No, it doesn't. Okay. It, it just, you, you, he's, he's only 18, almost 
18. What does that mean? That means, you, you know, the mind grows when you get older. Nah, you get 18 is the old one to the side. Yeah, I'm making if, you, if you talk about a five or six year old, I, I, we you can have a conversation. A very but hard life. but like, that, doesn't, uh, that doesn't justify sin. It just makes a character of a person. You see, so I, I think what you're doing is you're justifying your, your, your nephew's sin. And no, he, and no, 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 because I'd scold him and I'd make him go. No, I mean right now, right now, not later when he was alive, right no, now. No, like right before, like I'm hoping, I'm asking you, like if he took away drugs and he repented like all the negative BS that he was up to. And, it's not really about that. And, and it was self-defense to come to find out that, that, that the reason he shot the guy. And no, he didn't tell, not, he not tell the person, I don't believe, I... Not acceptable to kill someone something else. Yeah, no, no, he didn't kill nobody, he shot him in the thigh. When That's not acceptable. Died. I'm not saying... That, that someone who's repentant won't do that. Yeah, but like, you know, he's not in hell for that, is he? Of course he is. Of course he is. But listen, you're putting your hope in your nephew, man. You put no, your hope no, in Jesus. No, no, no. So let's 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 just say for oh, my grandfather. Let's I mean, just, my dad had to kill somebody to be in hell, right? Is he in hell? Of course he would be in hell for that. Of course he would. Where does the Bible say go to? Where does the Bible say go kill for your 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 country? No, no, no. There's something called conscientious objector. That's what it's called. You can get out of the military. It's called conscientious objector. God tells me not to kill. Thou shalt not kill. Therefore, I'm not going to kill. Okay. If we all did that right, we might just be dead. So, no, that's not like, true. The Vietnam it. War had nothing to do with us. I'm not saying we, we started threat. it. We started it. I'm a very and, 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 in, fact, in fact, there's not one but, war since the, since the Revolutionary War and the Civil War that, war that had anything. Well, that was wrong too. What but that, that has George anything to do with us. He was no, kids. Anything to do with us. Is he in hell? Well, I don't know what his final state was, but that wasn't right for him to do that. Well, if you shot somebody and killed him, you're trying to tell me that he's in hell. Like well, he can that. repent of it. He can yes. repent of it. But if you don't think it's wrong, why would you repent of it? If you think you're justified yeah, you in killing people. you got to recognize your actions to be able to repent. But you, you I mean, you, you seem like you're saying it's okay to kill no, someone I'm at war. No, I was asking you, like, uh, because I've had, I had a talk with briefly because I was a bad guy. That's what my mom kept me away from for the last year of his life. Um, because uh, I took care of her. And it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, I'm not like trying to equate, right? Like, say, okay, man, my father, he's a effing kids and this and that, making sex videos and all that crap. But this is all distraction because, because listen, whatever whatever state they were in when they died, it's over with now. So no, it's not, dude. They chased me around the city. No, 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 no. What, what, what I'm saying now is, Larry Walker, this guy? you're the important. Okay. You're, the, you're the person who's still alive. There's a state senator, right? You're the person who's still alive. His name's Larry Walker. So you can get right with God. But he's a drug dealer. Or he's a but what about you? Me? But but he's a state senator, right? I'm a state senator. What about you? Me? I'm not talking yeah, to the state senator. I'm talking to you. I'm not just an average Joe. I'm. I'm no, I'm talking about your soul, sir. But my soul? I can't, I can't talk it, about someone who's already passed on. No, you don't. Uh, on a constant. No. Just because I might have a room once in a while. You do not have the Holy Spirit inside of you. I have. How can you tell? You tell a tree by its fruit. Okay, so if the sign was a curse word, and the American government made that a curse word. By standing next to it? No, you're not, it's not sin by standing next to something that's sinful. But you're a sinner by gauging in sin. It's not, not the same thing as drinking. We were born in sin. No, no one's born in sin. We're born yeah. innocent babies. Jesus and that's not an excuse for your sin. For our sins. Right. Sure. We're born in sin. That doesn't say we're born in sin. We're, we're, we're made the likes of Jesus, but we're not Jesus. And the reason he died. So, so, so the, 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 make sure I understand you. The reason why you're drinking beer, smoking Remember? cigarettes, and cussing because you're born a sinner. Fairly cussing, but I'll stop. No, no, I'm asking you to answer the question. Is the oh, reason I, why you're no, doing. That's the one. I, I okay, so let's move past it then. Let's deal yeah, with your actual sin. What does that do with you right now, though? We're not born a sin. No one's born a sin. We're born innocent babies. Do babies who die go to hell? Why not? They're born in sin. They're innocent. How can they be innocent and be sinners at the same time? Because they don't have the forethought to be able to do anything. That's true. That's true. That's why. But are, but are you are you saying are you saying that that somehow sin transfers from Adam to them? Is that what you're saying? Okay. 
Okay, so so you're telling me Adam and Eve sin. I'm not saying the kids sin, but it, the Bible says, okay, you know, they they screw up. Like, right. They weren't supposed to. But if you read Genesis two and three, it never says anywhere there yeah. that because you sinned, Adam and Eve, all your posterity will be sinners now because you were sinners. So does that mean the kids are the babies? Babies are innocent. If it's um, on board, well, if they're sinners, why not kill them? Child. If they're sinners, That's why not kill them? Sin. They're not sinners. They're you just tell me they're born in sin. No. We as human beings, we explain our ourselves because God gave us free will, are born in sin because we're sin free. What, what free will do you have when you're born? What have you chosen to do? I have the choice to have a bowel movement. I have the choice That's sinful? To, to say, wah, screw, whatever the heck. Oh, yeah, they don't it talk. Could be. Maybe they talk. Huh? Oh, so now we're being taught something. That's not being born a sinner. Humans have sinned. That doesn't mean they keep on sinning. Just, just because people have sinned doesn't mean they keep on doing it. Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm just saying. The fact that you even say you're going to try to stop means you know you can stop. No, I yeah, I okay, so let's, let's move past, I'm born a sinner, let's move past, I was taught sin, let's deal with, I'm actually still sinning, I need to stop it. I am. Now, but how do you, but how do you stop it though? That's the question. How do I stop it? I gotta recognize it first. Okay. I gotta say to myself, to God, hey, like right now, God, you hear me? I'm trying my best. Hey, that's another excuse, right? Okay, I know I've gone through a lot of crap recently, and I've got a hard life. People are hard lives. So it seems like you're justifying your sin, the Mr. Your No, there's people that don't even eat, drink malaria water, this and that. And they're babies and kids, but this and that. We're talking about you, not them. No, no, I'm equating. I'm talking about you. I'm analogy. I'm saying with you. But I'm putting, I was going to jump back to Having that much problems compared to most people. Uh, seriously, like, even to this day, I don't care if you've been cooking for four years, drilling yourself, walking around the block, saying, uh, oh, streets. And I haven't heard many things back home. Right? Okay. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I guess I'm trying to compete. You're right. I am trying to compare myself against. Like 99% of all these people that are whack and fake, they're not true to themselves, true God, true to friends, or anything. Oh, they might they might come talk to you and be like, all right, on the up and up. But then when they walk off, they're not talking, talking. I don't want it. Or they can come up to me and claim to be a not Christian and have filthy language come out of their mouth. And like, be, but like, gone. say, like you know, say you do a sermon, or you know, and. Your constituents, uh, for lack of a better word, yes, yes, uh, pastor, yes, yes, uh, yes, priest, man, blah, 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 it depends on your religion, excuse my blah, blah, it's very disrespectful, I want to speak to that God, um, they walk it off, they don't think, they went to church on Sunday, and everything's good, they go back, party, and drink, and this, and beat, and wine. Isn't that what you're doing? No. No, no, I'm not about that. I'm talking about you're you're drinking, you're smoking, yeah, and you're cussing. Drinking, drink. you're smoking, and you're cussing. I wasn't smoking. I threw my light away. Well, it's right there. It's not thrown in the garbage. Yeah, I said, dude, I quit. Smoking. You want to throw it in the garbage? Yeah, yeah. It's right there. Okay. Yeah, it's throw it really in the garbage. Quit smoking. Yeah, that's why you still have a lighter, right? It's hard. It's the worst addiction. I don't believe that. It's only because uh, psychological. Which one is it? Psychological. Well, I'd be that one right there. Yeah, like I have like there. Okay. But that right there. I I want to drink it, but I got water, so I'm kind of. Like, See, you, you're not reading. I, no, it's right no. there. I, I didn't. I didn't feel how full it is, man. It's right there. And I talk like this. Pour I'm it out. From California, I'm supposed to go to speech you there. Should, you should pour that out and put it in the garbage. Okay, I told you. Um, should I pour it out right here? Yeah, water the wood chips a little yeah. bit. They need it more than you do. Yeah, oh dang, right? See, I say dang and stuff. Like that. I don't know, just a little bit. There you go.
That happens. Put in trash. Hey, sir. Oh, well, I mean, I'm just going to tell you the same thing. No, no, no. No, no, I'm telling you the same thing. Elaborate. Tell me some more. You haven't a, tell me how I can fix this. You haven't taken heed yet. The way you can fix it, stop striving in I the have problems reading. So with the Bible, I can't comprehend certain times. So you asked me to speak and I started speaking. Oh, sorry, I got ADD. So, so what you need to do is stop striving in the flesh. Stop trying to fix your life and your own strength. And actually repent and give your whole life to Jesus. No excuses. And the moment you do that, he will transform you and change you on the inside. And then you'll never want to do this. Even when we're not around, we walk away here in a little bit and you have your by yourself hold on and you're by yourself again and then, and then you have and then you have your you have a chance to get another white claw you have a chance to get another lighter and smoke another cigarette you won't want to do it when nobody's looking because you're doing it for jesus and myself no 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 not for yourself not for yourself not for yourself not for yourself you're doing it for jesus for the glory of god yes of course do anything for yourself well, doing it for God is doing it. He's happy for me. He's happy for everybody. Well, there's no else. doubt that sin is destructive to you yeah. and not sin is beneficial to you, but, but you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for no, Jesus. yeah. I, I just kind of going off a little bit more like what your impression is to the outside world. And, oh, there might be an eight year old there. I'm drinking a beer. I'm talking yeah. all crazy. What's your name? Matthew. Matthew. Yes. I have a son named Matthew. Well, Matthew, I'll pray for you tonight. Thank you. Okay, but, but listen, but listen, but listen, but listen. My, my prayers won't fix you. No, it won't. You need to repent need yourself. Away from no, you need to repent. And repent. No, it's not about your surroundings. Not necessarily your surroundings. It's about you getting right with God. And God can keep you holy no matter what your surroundings are. go to a log box. What? What? It's crazy. My yeah. wife, I am in a cartel of what I am. Okay. I understand. So I'm trying to ask for help about what I should do about this. I gave you, I gave you the help. That's all I can give you. Okay, I have two large boxes, um, an alias. Um, this um, is the day you need, and I will be glad. Rejoice in the Lord always. Promise to be happy.